Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for checking in. Um, so I did a post on my community about if you would want to do kind of a watch along or should I do something with a build along where I go through all the steps and processes I do as a stock removal knife maker. And so far everybody's 100% saying that they would rather like to see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. Uh, this is gonna be my first video in it. Um, basically, as a stock removal knife maker, I, um, it's, it's just that. So I, instead of what you would normally see, uh, like on Forged in Fire or something else where you're smithing the knife into shape, I just do stock removal. So I start with, you know, a bar of steel similar to this, or just like this. <laughs> this is a bar of 1095, uh, eighth inch thick. And I, as you see, draw out one of my models that I have and I start cutting it out and then shaping it and putting bevels in it, everything else. And then it gets to the handle, et cetera, et cetera. So it is a multi-step process to get it to a full knife. But basically you start with a bar of steel and then end with the completed knife. Um, this one is a Cardinal. This is the model I call the Cardinal. Um, Nice, this one is in 440C with black burlap, micarta handles, stainless steel pins, G10 liners. And so basically this knife started off just like these in a bar of steel. And then I ended up with the final product. Uh, and this one is actually, at time of videoing this, is available. I'll put the link of my Etsy store in the description of this video so you guys could check it out because also available is one that I completed is the bud uh model the bud um this is 1095 steel acid etched stone washed uh and has removable handle scales for cleaning purposes this is jg10 with blue g10 liners um nice little edc blade which is what I make is uh all of my blades are pretty much EDC size blades. Some of them get a little big, but um, for the most part, they're nice and small and manageable for everyday carry. Uh, so what I have on the table here, um, I'm, as a stock removal, I don't like to waste material. So I like try to squeeze these things in, whether I can make this cut right in here or not. I don't know, it's up to for debate. I That's why I kind of started to see if I can make that turn. Uh, if I can't, well, then I'll kind of shift everything over. But I think I can make that turn. I think uh, once I get it in there, the blade in there, I'll be all right. And plus I can start removing some in here. So I can do that. Um, but before you get to this stage, you have to kind of have a big plan. What knife do I want to make? What is it going to look like? You draw it out. You kind of get a good idea of the shape that you're looking for, whether it's a small EDC or maybe one that takes up this whole bar. Uh, you kind of have to have a good idea of what you want that blade shape to look like. And I kind of like to know what the end product is going to look like. Like what handle material am I going to use? How many pins do I need? What kind of material do I need for pins, etc. So <clears throat> I like to have kind of the big picture before I really start. And for this build, I'm going to do, so I, I usually do two or three blades at once, <clears throat> but I'm going to try to focus on this one. Um, I'm going to be also doing this one. Uh, this is a mini obsession. So I have my obsession model and then I have the mini obsession, which is just a really small blade and the pedal, which is also a nice small EDC size fixed blade. Um, and so I'm going to be focusing on this one for 
the purposes of this video. So it won't be anything major. It's not going to be a giant knife, but it's a perfect, nice EDC fixed blade. I kind of think I already have ideas for what I want to use for handle material, etc. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm going to cut all three of these out. And while I'm doing that, I'm not going to really be showing you guys that on YouTube. But I also have this Damascus that I'm slowly going to start working on some of these projects that I have laid out for it. Uh, I'm really excited. This is the first time I've worked with Damascus, so it'll be uh, terrifying. <laughs> to be completely honest, it's going to be completely terrifying for me. Um, but I'm going to start with this. Uh, this is a stigma. Oh no, sorry. This is the pistol, a full pistol. And uh, one of the biggest knives that I, one not models that I have. I have about 17 models that I make. Um, and I kind of like to stick to those models. I just recently did the bud, which I just showed you. Just because I was trying to come up with a model for a removable handle scales. So that model... I'm going to try to make that model where it's always removable handle scales. And uh, I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. You think that's smart. Maybe that's not so, so smart. But So I'm going to be cutting a bunch of these out today. Hopefully, I'll get to them. I'll show you on the video of what I use and how I do that. And um, we'll get it started. So... Well, I hope you guys are excited because I'm kind of excited about sharing each process with you. I'm going to have to remember to break out the camera on this and make sure I document every step. That's probably going to be my biggest downfall as I guarantee you guys somewhere on this series, I'm going to forget to videotape a step and you guys are going to have to see afterwards what it looks like. So I will apologize ahead of time if I miss that, but I'm going to do my best um in getting that out to you guys but first we got to chop all this up so it's down to stock removal and this is the base of stock removal is taking this to my bandsaw and start cutting all this up so hope you guys are ready i am excited about getting some things started so here we go all right guys so i'm gonna do all the cutting on this this is my bandsaw uh it's a port band portable bandsaw just a bower portable bandsaw and i invested in swag off-road table that they have that has the foot pedal to control it and this is where i'm going to be doing all the cutting on this on the knives today so this is what i use as a primary tool to cut the blades you could do this many different ways but this is how i do it so i'm going to set up the camera and get this started and we're gonna go all right All right, guys, so roughly cut out um, to the point where it looks like this, and the rest of it will all come off on the grinder. So the next step is off to the grinder, get this smoothed out a little bit to where the line is, and that will be the rough shape of the blade. All right, moving on. All right, guys, so... I'm going to clean this one up. Uh, this is the one we're going to be focusing on. Uh, I have a couple that I'm going to be doing, but I'm just going to video this one. I'm um, going to be using my 1x30 Wen belt sander. This is what I use for everything. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to just going to clean this up and get the basic shape. Uh, I can get everything but right in where the finger choil is, and then I'll have to do that with um, 
my Dremel tool, which I'll show you. And hopefully by the end of this one, this will have the rough shape that I'm looking for for the pedal uh, that is the model that we're going to be doing. So I'm all got my protective gear on, going to put my mask, and then we'll get going. All right, let me put my mask on. I'll crank this sucker up and we'll get going. Uh, I'm going to do it in a separate, maybe do a little time lapse again. Uh, seems to be working. You guys will get the idea. All right. Okay guys, so there you have it. We have the blank. And now I have the wood, the metal. You can adjust it however we want, but I think it's pretty darn close to what I'm looking for. Um, and it has a good shape, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna refine that finger loop a little bit with the drum sander on my Dremel and we'll be on our way. But first, I need to get those other ones done. So, check in with you in a bit. All right, so nothing fancy, just your regular Dremel tool with the barrel attachment. Um, and I'm just trying to smooth out this area because the belt sander, the belt sander didn't get it. So I'm just trying to smooth this area out. Uh, and then I'm gonna take this, you're gonna see me going along the whole edge of the blade to try to smooth out all the grind lines that the belt sander did. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and get into it.
All right, guys, so nice and smooth. I got some of the grind lines out. So we're looking pretty good. All right, so we have this, I guess at this point, it's a knife blank, um, shaped to where I'm comfortable. It's cut out, it's shaped. Um, I have my wooden blanks that I base all my designs off of, and I always take, pull them out. And I make sure it's close or even better to what the wooden blank is. And, um, I know with this one, I made it a little small. So this pedal is going to be a little bigger than what I normally would do, which is perfectly fine with me. Um, so, and I kind of like, um, this little detail in the handle where it's a little flatter here sorry and uh then this one is a little bit more rounded so i'm happy with the way this is kind of shaped um i play with it see how it feels in the hand um and just kind of start thinking about overall what this is going to look like um and feel like because once i get the scales in there and everything else that that hit that's really going to come out um but at this point, the next step in the process is to drill out the holes for the handle, uh, where the pins are going to go. In this case, the pins and the lanyard tube. And then any other holes that I want to put in to relieve some of the weight. Now, obviously, this is a very small knife, very thin blade stock. So this is not going to be a terribly... Um, heavy knife that's for sure and once especially once i get all the bevels ground down it's really going to be <laughs> uh light so i don't really need to put too many holes in here i'm going to go with an eighth inch pin here the quarter inch lanyard hole and i think i might put one more quarter inch hole in the middle that will help the scales stick to the blank once I get it all glued together, it gives a place for the epoxy to settle in and cure. So I'll put a little hole in there and that'll be pretty much all I'll need to do for this. So this is going to be pretty simple. Um, you can grind out channels. I've seen people grind out channels in the handles. So when they do a glue up, there's something for the glue to go. I've seen um, people do the backside of the actual scale material that they're going to use um but what all i'm going to do now is i'm going to kind of lay out and measure out where i want the uh, pins to go and i'm going to just use this um to put a little pre-drill hole or divot in there just use my punch to give me a landmark for the drill bit um and I will say, if you are even interested in doing this, if you decide to do this, <laughs> sorry, I guess I just said that twice. Um, cobalt drill bits are really the way to go. Um, or any kind of steel meant drill bits, because what I've learned is you're going to go through a lot of drill bits if you're not using the right kind. Um, and even with the cobalt drill bits, you got to make sure you're getting high quality drill bits or you're just going to burn through some of the steel. The problem is the steel gets very hot and it just melts up your drill bits, especially um, stainless for some reason. Uh, 440C, when I was when I worked with that, it was just just tearing up drill bits left and right. Um, and I only use a five speed, you know, Harbor Freight drill press. So probably the cheapest drill press on the market. So maybe that might be my problem too. But then again, like you saw my grinder, I have a small grinder. I have a small shop in general. So basic tools is kind of what I've been doing, but I've been pretty, I've come up with different things of holding things together and making sure I keep everything lubricated well. And it's been working. And one day maybe I'll upgrade, but for right now, I don't really have that kind of money to be dumping thousands and thousands of dollars into equipment as much as I would love to. 
um, is just not going to happen. So anyway, guys, I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to punch some hold, punch some uh, where I want the drill bit to go, landmark. And then I'm going to head to the drill press. So I don't know if you guys wanted to watch that part or not. I'm going to film it. Uh, sometimes I'll measure it out. Sometimes I just do it by hand, um, depending on where I want this to go. So I'm thinking that the handle scales are going to, usually I like to come up to right about in this area to give myself a little space. I know my bevels, my bevels will probably start about right here for the knife. So what I want my pin to be at the forward part of that. So I'm going to put my first pin about right there. And then I need to make sure that this is not going to get too close to the back of the knife. Because then when you start to shape the handle, then that lanyard tube gets a little wonky and it won't look right. So I use this. It's a little stencil and I have my sizes so that's eighth inch hole so that's probably i usually don't do it for something that small but let's see that's a quarter inch and i want to make sure that's far enough away from the edge of the blade um, edge of the back of the knife i don't know i'm thinking right about there what do you guys think what do you guys think right about there that doesn't look like it's too close but once i get the handle scales on it and everything starts to get rounded and shaped it'll make sense uh i kind of like that right there and then i said we're just going to do two more holes i might do one there maybe one more we'll see these these are not aesthetic more so than they are just for, like I said, a place to for the that to settle. That's a little low. I might raise that up a little bit. But like I said, these these aren't aesthetically important to me at all. They're just there for a little weight removal and a little bit of uh, excuse me. <clears throat> I don't even know what I was saying. A little bit of weight removal for where someplace for the epoxy to go. So I have this. Try to find the center of that. And then you can see it leaves a little dimple and that's where the drill bit will settle in so I can do that hole. And then I do find the center of that one and we do this three more times. And I probably should have said this. No, I don't like that spot. I should probably should have said this in the beginning when I'm starting this process. I am still a new maker. I've only been making knives for about a year. So don't take everything that I'm doing as, oh, I got to do it exactly like he did it. I'm probably not doing it the right way, but I'm doing it in a way that works for me. Um, and I'm sure there's other guys who are doing this full time because again, I'm only part time. Um, that can probably create a much better product and do it in a better way. But this is just my method of doing things and I decided to share it with you all. Um, so I'm kind of putting myself out there. So if you are an actual maker and you're seeing that I'm doing something completely wrong, let me know. Maybe I tell me how you do it. I'm open for a little criticism um, as long as it's a positive way to do it. But there we go. So I'm gonna take this over to the drill and we'll get started. Well, all right guys, so I got it set up on the drill press. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the four small holes first, and then I go back and go to the bigger hole. Um, kind of works out best that way. Um, I hope you guys can see that all right. I'll probably end up making this a little bit fast once I get into it um, or do a little time lapse because just you sitting there watching me drill holes probably isn't going to be fun, but I'll edit it up and uh, 
make it go pretty quick like I have some of these other ones. So, all right, here we go. My hand might be blocking your view, huh? Let me see. Yeah, no, you're good. All right. All right, guys, so the holes are there, um, but you can see they kind of, uh, they have an edge to them from drilling through. Uh, this 1095 gets super hot um, for some whatever reason. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the countersink built bit, and I'm going to smooth those holes out a little bit um, and make them as flat as possible. Usually I'll take these over and do a little hand sanding on the holes as well to uh, smooth that out. So there's no lip there at all. It just helps with uh, a lot of the processes that we do from this point on. Uh, so I'm just going to drill these out, smooth those holes out a little bit, and we'll move on to the next step. So this won't take long. All right, we're back over here. Um, so the holes are drilled. And uh, besides making the bevels, that's like one of the hardest things for me for some reason, probably my drill bit. But you can see how the holes still kind of have an edge there. So I, what I need to do is smooth that out and get rid of that uh, before 
we get to the next step, which is the bevels. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hand sand this out. It's actually gonna smooth out the blade itself. Um, try to get some of these scratches that come out of the steel when they come. Um, try to get at least this area cleaned up a little bit because that is what you're gonna see. You're not gonna see any of this, but I still wanna kind of clean it off just so that at least get all these edges off. You can see that edge. Um, so anyway, what I use, I have this little magnet. That didn't go on well. So I have this magnet. I have a nice flat surface, which is this tile. And this is just 120 grit sandpaper uh, to get me started on this. And it goes back and forth. You can do this wet, you can do this dry. Um, I'm doing it dry for now. And already you can see the difference. Just, you know, a couple passes. It's smoothing those out. Uh, I can't really get a finger too much on some of that now. So I'll just do a couple more passes and this will be ready. This goes pretty quick um, with a higher grit sandpaper. So, you know, I'll use usually 120 is pretty good for me. Uh, it works really well with getting everything smoothed out and ready for probably the most hair raising part of this process, which is the bevels. So you can see how it's already getting smoothed out um, and all of those edges that were there are now pretty much gone. So let's flip it over, do it to the other side. And while I'm doing this, guys, if you um, have any questions about any of the steps that I'm doing or questioning why I'm doing something, leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, and I'll answer it. I like hearing from you guys. I try to comment back if anybody leaves a comment. There we go. See, that's getting nice and cleaned up now. This side I feel like was worse than the other side, but... Yeah, I don't feel any of those edges now. That's pretty good. Still got some big scratches. I also hand sand a lot, so I can work those out with hand sanding. <laughs> You're gonna notice uh, with this build, a lot of it, my favorite tool are these two things, my hands. So I hand sand a ton of the blades that, you, that I sell, anything that you've seen besides making the bevels on the grinder i've done everything by hand um and i just know that it's going to get done better so i don't like that scratch um it's pretty deep but i'm happy with how smooth this is so literally depending where this bevel ends up you're i might have to work a little bit more on that once i get the bevels ground in i can hand sand it um, and try to smooth that just that one section out a little bit, but for the most part ugh, Man that magnet is strong um, I'm happy with it. Let me wipe this off a little bit You know so We are ready for the next step and I think the next step on this process I will make into another video so again I hope you're enjoying this process. I hope uh, this has been somewhat entertaining and educational for you guys. Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, please like, subscribe, um, whatever you guys need to do. Again, at the end of the day, that choice is yours. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you on the next one.